Hi everyone, thanks for your attention and thanks for MCQMC conference. My topic is Higher Order Weak Scheme for the Heisman Stochastic Volatility Model by Extrapolation. Firstly, please let me introduce the background. In mathematical finance, there's a problem of option pricing, that is, how to calculate the price of an option efficiently. Let S be a d-dimensional stochastic process. The price of option can usually be written as ex expectation of the functional uh, in this form and the risk neutral probability measure in which G is usually called the payoff functions. Different options have different payoff functions. And when uh, such a quantity has no closed form solutions, one may rely on Monte Carlo approach to estimate its value. Suppose S follow a stochastic differential equation, and we let S hat be an approximation of S based on a step time discrete scheme. Then there are two crucial questions. First, how fast does the approximated value converge to the true expectation when the step size approaches zero? This is a problem of weak convergence. Second, can the error be expanded to arbitrarily high powers of step size? If we can, then we can apply extrapolation to achieve weak approximation of any desired order. To address this problem, we need to specify three things. First, which stochastic differential equation does S follow? Second, which numerical approximation S hat do we consider? Third, which payoff functional G should we deal with? In this talk, we will focus on the Heston Stochastic Volatility Model, which is called the Heston Model in short. The dynamics of the Heston Model is as follows. Where the parameters R, K, theta, sigma, and rho are constant. Here, W1 and WT are two independent bounding motions. So, the Heston model is a two-dimensional SDE driven by two bounding motions. In the Heston model, S can be used to describe the evolution of the asset price, and V is used to uh, model the variance of S. Please take a look, close look at the model. We see that V can be simulated in isolation because its component does not contain S. Moreover, we found that this Hessian model has several square roots. Uh, which means the UU assumptions, such as the Lipschitz assumption, is not satisfied for the Heston model. Let me recall some basic facts about the Heston model. First, the model is one of the most fundamental models in mathematical finance with wide applications in various financial markets, including the market of equality, the market of foreign exchange, and the market of interest rates. Second, the Heston model 
admit a unique strong solution. Although the closed form solution is not available in the literature. Third, the option price is usually of the form. Uh, for the majority of options, there's no analytical uh, formulas. Therefore, one may have to use time discrete schemes to approximate the Hessian solution associated with the Monte Carlo approach to estimate this expectation. Uh, since the Hessian model is very popular, many numerical methods have been proposed, and here I just list a few uh, which I'm familiar with. The Heston model can be simulated exactly, so we have some exact simulation methods. However, these methods are typ typically time-consuming when applied to uh, price path dependent options. For this reason, there are many time discrete schemes developed to approximate the path of S. Most time discrete schemes are based on discretizations for both V and S. And some uh, method just discretize S with V simulated exactly or almost exactly. Uh, we should know that the transition probability of the V is, uh, is known, uh, which follows the non central chi squared distribution, which we shall discuss. Although there are many numerical methods proposed, most of the time this was seen in the literature for the Hessian model are restricted to the failures in DEX. That is to say, they tend to converge slowly when F is small. However, in real applications of the Hessian model, the failure index calibrated to financial market data is usually very small. This situation is uh, with small f quite challenging. The recent paper by Heft and Jensen suggests that the euler newton method with equal distance step size would converge slowly when applied to the balance process. Hence, it's intuitively reasonable to believe that the Hessian model would suffer the same problem because the variance process is the one component of the Hessian model. On the other hand, research on the weak convergence rate for the Hessian model is quite limited, particularly that applied uh, to the full parameter range. Let me talk about our research motivation. Motivated by the fact that uh, most analysis for time discrete schemes to the variance process have parameter restrictions. We instead analyze a time discrete scheme with V simulated exactly or almost exactly. The reason behind our motivation is that we feel that a stochastic process such as V may have some good properties. And these properties may break if we discretize the model. So I like the UU analysis focusing on model coefficient. We concentrate on properties of the stochastic process. We shall discuss this idea later. So far, we have not 
uh, talked which skin we apply. So let y be the log s t. And we have this equation where this stuff means uh, e equality in distribution. Here, n is a standard normal random variable that is independent of v. So this implies that here n is independent of the distribution part. This formula is due to body decay. Uh, literature says that given bu for any t larger than u, we have that vt follow a, a scaled non central chi square distribution, so it can be simulated exactly. Let's pay attention to this equality. We found that uh, from the right side of the equation, so uh, only the time integrated variance process needed to be approximated. It's convenient then to approximate it using the trapezoidal rule, which leads to the numerical scheme as follows. So uh, for this numerical scheme, we just replace the time uh, integrated variance process with the trapezoidal approximation, and we find that and i are independent standard normal random variables that are also independent of v and we simulate v exactly despite this uh this simplicity of this scheme this time discrete uh time discrete scheme dates back to anderson more than 10 years ago and several methods have been Develop it based on it. However, from the theoretical perspective of numerical analysis, weak convergence research is quite limited. Here, we establish the weak convergence result below. Let P be uh, any polynomial function. And then we have the, the this result, which says that for polynomial payoff, uh, the weak order is two, and the result is valid for the full parameter range where h is a uh, equal distance step size. Different from the UU analysis, you uh, approach to analyze the model coefficient. Our proof proofs focuses on the properties of the variance process. Let me give you a sketch of the proof. The proof can be divided into three steps. In the first step, we show that the weak error can be written as a submission of these quantities. So we see that uh, in these quantities, uh, we have uh, this trapezoidal rule with step size h on the uh, time integral of v. So step one means that we have transfers error analysis of the weak error uh, to the analysis of this quantity. In step two, we make some further transformation. We show that the analysis of the quantity uh, above is equivalent to the analysis of, of the trapezoidal rule with step size h on this multiple time interval. We found that the interground is the expectation which can be regarded as a multiple uh, variable function, uh, which is a function of t1, t2 up to tm. So we see that uh, if we restrict the domain of the function to the simplex domain, we found that uh, the integrand is twice continuously differentiable on this domain. However, we should also notice that this uh, this integrand uh, defined on the hypercube, this hypercube is not differentiable everywhere. Particularly, the singularities lies 
on the boundary of the simplex, simplex that compose uh, the hype, this hype cube. Step two means that we have transfer the analysis of weak convergence to the analysis of uh, uh, numerical integration, which is deterministic. And finally, we shall prove that the conversion rate of the trapezoidal rule we define is just two. And this so is this two. Um, this is a problem of investigating the classical trapezoidal rule over the hypercubes, but there are singularity of the integrand on hypercubes, as we have discussed, which is non standard analysis. Um, actually, uh, half of the paper, half of this paper, uh, half, half of this paper is uh, devoted to prove uh, step three. Uh, which is certainly far from trivial. Uh, after we have talked about the weak convergence, let's move on to the extrapolation. Uh, we have discussed that uh, one way to obtain, uh, to obtain an approximation of higher order is to use uh, the extrapolation. The idea behind the extrapolation is simple. For example, suppose the approximation error can be uh, expressed, can be expanded in this form, which means that the approximation is of uh, first weak order. Extrapolation means that we can eliminate the leading order term for higher orders. So to be more specific, we can use the uh, weak approximations in this form based on uh, discretizations with different step size. And we see from this equation that this approximation is of weak order 2. So in this sense, uh, extrapola extrapolation has improved the error from order 1 to order 2. In fact, uh, extrapolation can be applied to uh, get a more higher order uh, weak approximations if uh, there's a, uh, so the error can be expanded to higher power of step size. Early work was due to Taylor and to Barrow, Claude and Platt and Hoffman when model coefficient set by some usual assumptions such as the Leipzig continuous. However, the, as we have discussed, the Hessen model does not satisfy these assumptions. Then there comes the question, can the error be expanded in terms of step size h? The answer is yes. We should provide some more general results and discuss its application on the Hessen model. So please let me give you some notations. Let this stuff be the probability space with few situations satisfying the usual conditions. And let this be a pair of stochastic process such that one can sample exactly from their distributions. We can define a function of multiple variables as this expectation on the closed simplest domain. Moreover, we can define uh, Fm bar uh, as is an extension of S Fm on a larger hypercube domain. Now we are in the position to define the trapezoidal rule. For the fm dimensional integral, we can define the m dimensional trapezoidal approximation as follows. Uh, so with the uh, coefficient uh, uh, equal to half h uh, at the starting and end point, and uh, the coefficient is h somewhere else. So this uh, trapezoidal rule is the uh, 
extension of one dimension trapezoid rule to the multi dimensional case through the Cartesian product, which is classical. Now, we shall put some assumption on the integral. The assumption is put on the simplest domain rather than the hypercube domain. So the first assumption says that uh, fm, the integral, uh, the derivative of the integral must exist and continue rest. So this assumption means that the integral is sufficiently smooth. The second assumption says that uh, uh, so this, this integration should be finite. Now we can establish uh, this uh, theorem based on these assumptions. Uh, let n and be integers, and under assumption one, we have such a error expansion, uh, expansion for this deterministic problem. This theorem is essential to derive the error expansion for the test model, and we can see this is a numerical integration problem where the hypercube domain has singularity of the boundary of each simplest component. Now let's see how this theorem linked to our error analysis of the Hessen model. We let ft equal to the f to vt and the phi t equal to the to this stuff. Then both assumption one and assumption two are satisfied for the Hessen model, and we can uh, establish the theorem below. Uh, this theorem says that for payoff uh, functions, uh, polynomial payoff functions, uh, the error can be expanded into arbitrarily high powers of step size. So with this result, one can easily apply extrapolation to construct a uh, weak approximation of any desired order. Okay, having finished the theoretical part, now let's move on to the numerical part uh, to see whether the numerical results result support the theoretical analysis. Okay, um, let's compare the weak approximation method uh, to approximate the standard call option with realistic parameters. And this uh, in this finger, we have plot the number of steps against the, against the, this is uh these are the option price. And this dashed line is the exact value of the option price. And the blue curve is for the, uh, the second order weak approximation. And the red is for the third order weak approximation which is achieved by extrapolation. And the green is obtained, uh, so it's a fourth order weak approximation. As we can see, with the same number of steps, uh, same number of steps, the fourth order weak approximation by extrapolation uh, is the best with the lowest bias. Then comes the third order weak approximation and the second weak order approximation has the largest bias. So this means the extrapolation we have applied indeed improve the uh, numerical so the numerical performance by uh, lowering the bias. On the other hand, we have also investigated the numerical uh, the macro rate and uh, the result is in, ge in general consistent with the theoretical rate, which is not reported here. And the extensions 
Our results can be extended to more stochastic differential equations which contain components that can be simulated exactly, for example, the Bayes model. Uh, I'm not going to give a detail here, but you can find more on our paper. And uh, there are the, uh, the uh, future research we wanted to do. So there are two directions of research. So one is to extend analysis to some uh, exponential payoffs, and the other is to develop time discrete schemes to more stochastic for models in finance. Uh, here is a reference, and thanks for your attention. This is the end of the presentation. Thank you very much.